Hi and welcome to this special edition of Retrocore. Now over the years since I've been making Retrocore, many people ask me, it must be difficult to put a Retrocore together. Um, some people seem to think it's really easy as well. But to be honest, it's neither very difficult or very easy. But what it certainly isn't is connecting a console to the PC and pressing record. There's a bit more to it than that. So in this special, I'm going to show you what goes into making a typical episode of Retrocore. Now any good show needs some sort of reference material. Now one site I do find extremely useful for finding um, what games to play and uh, use on Metrocore is this site here, Hardcore Gaming 101. It features modern stuff as well as mostly old stuff to be honest. But each uh, month or every two weeks or so, they update it. As you can see they're doing a bit of a Halloween special. you got some Brain Dead 13 there. and. What's so good about this site is they compare different versions of the game. So here we got a review on Brain Death 13 for the IBM PC, Windows, uh, Macintosh, CDI, 3D, Jaguar CD, Sega Saturn, PlayStation, and of course an iPhone. Okay, and the articles are pretty well written. Um, sometimes there's one or two mistakes in there. I find quite a few mistakes for Sega Saturn details, but that's because I'm a bit of a Sega Saturn geek. But overall, this is an excellent site, and even if you don't want to read the um, standard updates which appear every month they have millions and millions of articles like you can see them all down here so I usually use this site quite often for the reference of um, what to feature on Metrocore so once we've decided what games to feature on Metrocore we have to get the games onto the PC and how do we do that well I'll show you right now so this is where most of the consoles are kept these are the consoles I always keep uh, set up as you can see, I keep them uh, covered on their little dust blankets. So here we've got the uh, Sega Mega Drive. Mega CD blew up while the laser died. Luckily, I've got a replacement kit, so I'll fix that in some time. And here we've got the Sega Saturn. And uh, underneath that, we've got the Dreamcast. You can see I've got a bit of a silver and black fetish going on. And the good old 360, which has been working quite well since November 2009. Not a day's trouble with it. Great. So all these machines are connected to this uh, television set here. Oh, and we also got a retro uh, emulation PC down here, which I uh, do use for Super Famicom stuff occasionally, um, and other 8-bit consoles, and of course arcade stuff. Um, I do own a Super Famicom and various other consoles, but it's a bit of a hassle keeping them all set up really. So, the emulation is the way to go. So yeah, as I said, these are all connected to this big TV here. Um, the Mega Drive is connected to RGB SCART, Sega Saturn RGB SCART, and um, the Dreamcast is connected to S Video. But uh, when I use it, uh, when I want to really get the uh, high quality stuff, I connect it to the PC screen through VGA, VGA. So here you can see around the back of the TV, and it's a bloody mess, it's awful. Um, so you can see that little box down there, that's the XAV2S, which uh, takes an RGB signal and converts it to S Video. Because of course, as you can see, Japanese TVs don't have RGB. Well, not the modern ones anyway. Why the hell do you need three LAN connectors? Nuts. But they do have a shitload of HDMIs. And one good thing about this television set is they'll actually output the video signal as well. So that outputted video signal goes down one of these HDMI cables all the way around the back here. And down past the window, over here to the back of the computer. And usually it's connected into here, as you can see. At the moment it's not connected because it's actually connected to the back of the PC. Because I felt like playing a bit of a Model 3 on the television. So you're seeing how all the consoles are connected to the PC. They go into the TV through the highest quality possible and then through from the TV to HDMI into the back of this computer where they're all captured at 1080p or 720p. Actually, usually 720p because it's a lot easier to edit. It takes up less space, you see. Okay, so how do I go about editing? Well, let's take a look. So throughout the years when I've been making Metrocore, I've used various different um, bits of software. 
Originally when YouTube's quality was really bad, I used to encode all the videos into Flash using um, Adobe's uh, Flash engineer. And um, I also used programs such as Virtual Dub and uh, Windows Live Movie Maker to make Virtual Core. But these days it's a lot more complicated than that and I use um, this bit of software here called Track Axe PC. So let's boot it up and you can see a typical episode, actually volume uh, 24 Virtual Core 3 in production here. So we just open up the file. I'm sh pretty sure I've still got it. I hope I've still got the uh, original file. I'll tell you what, here it is. Like it says Retrocore 26. That must have been the one. Okay, so <clears throat> as you can see, there are an awful lot of different tracks. As you can see, clearly see, this one is text, and that says Night Sat, so that'd be a Night Saturn. There's another Night Saturn, that'll be a audio. That one's video. Ooh, what could that be? More text. Weapon, probably uh, some sort of game. Actually, it's audio track, so it could be anything actually. And we got the uh, more video tracks up here. This is the main video track, and this is the uh, main audio track. So, as you can see, we've got the opening. So, let's just turn on these speakers. Should have done that beforehand. Oops, it's at the end of the program. So, we just put it here. And you'll notice the actual video displays down here in the corner. You can actually put that full screen. So this is the opening of Retrocore as you know it at the moment. And the video quality is really slow, uh, really low I should say. Because... It's on live editing. So of course you don't really want high quality video. Well you can't put it that high but it slows things out a bit. So, here's, you got, here's the main audio track and here's the main video track. Now, these little boxes here, you can see, are different effects. This is just a basic fade effect, as you'll see down here. There you go. Fades in guest course. I've featured guest course a few times on Metro Core now, but last time I did do a playthrough feature on this game, and you can see here, this is the uh, vocal track. This is actually uh, my vocal track, which I use to do all the uh, voiceovers on the game. Now, you'd be expecting I do these voiceovers on some really high-tech software but, or hardware, but I don't. They're done on this telephone here. Um, this is a Sharp Aquas 104. It's in a transparent case, so it looks a bit more bulky than it actually is. Um, this is a full HD, uh, dual-core, pretty fast uh, telephone. And um, as you can see, Oops, I left the camera on there. Well, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Okay, so this is uh, my telephone, which I record all the voices on. And the software which is used is this one here, Easy Voice Recorder. Now, actually, I did used to use um, an iPhone before this bar. I got fed up with iPhone, the stupid rules. And I record the voices in 64 kilobytes per second. ACC Mono, we don't really need stereo for the voice. And... Um, this uh, actual app allows you to use different uh, recording uh, sessions, uh, recording uh, settings, I should say. Um, for the uh, sound input source, I use the camcorder microphone, which is actually pretty good. Okay, and you can do all sorts of different effects and so on. So anyway, the voices are recorded on that, sent over to the PC, and then edited on this software here, which is Goldwave Digital Audio Editor. Now you can get a trial version which is free, but I've uh, actually bought the original license. And in here you can see all the original video files which make up this uh, the last episode of Retro Core. And of course, my voice files. So I just throw the shite of the month one in there. And here we go. Oops, so I'll start from here. Whoa, just check out the quality of the animation. That is top notch, I must say. You've got to ask yourself, what the hell were the designers thinking when they made this game? And you see, you take that, you edit all the things that you don't want, and then you stick it here onto the video tracks. Now, of course, sometimes video footage can be quite loud. So we have these little things known as envelopes. And these alter the volume of the actual video track, as you'll see right now. So you put the volume down, if 
If I just play it. I forgot to uh, add this little section. There we go. Let's get it over here. Turn that down. Device. So we can actually turn the volume up of the game and turn my voice volume down. Okay, so that's how the audio is done. Now sometimes you need to put a bit of text overlaid into the video. And that is done by just putting a little text file in here. We just open up text properties. You can type it about. You can see uh, down here on the uh, preview screen, you can move it about. You know, you can add effects to it and so on. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. So, here we've got the audio track, the uh, actual video for this, and then the blur effect the text and the night's image. Modern retro. The modern retro speech there. Now here you can see it's completely nuts. We've got what, how many tracks? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tracks. Now this seventh track is actually just the retro core logo up here, which we can, uh, make disappear and reappear using the video envelope. You can also put some transparency in. Now what we have up here is the original audio soundtrack from the uh, 360 version of Nights and here is the uh, voiceover from me. Here we got the original 360 Nights. Oh sorry, no we haven't. Here we've got the, the uh, text which is a uh, Xbox 360 and uh, Sega Saturn. And above we got the uh, 360's uh, night image and uh, Sega Saturn's night image. And you can see the 360's sound is being completely muted. But how do you get both images on the screen at the same time? Well, this is where it becomes a little bit tricky. And because the Sega Saturn version of this game did run faster than the Xbox, there also had to be a lot of editing in. So you'll notice uh, up here on the Xbox section, there's actually quite a lot of cuts. You can see here and here, which is basically just to keep it in timing with what's going on down here. Now, the uh, actual special effects are done by using a split screen uh, generator or split screen effect on the software. And as you can see, this is the Sega Saturn screen here. And if you check out down here, you can see I'm moving it about and around and around within the field. You can uh, shrink it down, zoom it up, you know, you can have an absolutely ridiculous size of image. Okay, and that's how that's done. And of course you can do the same thing with the Xbox 360. And all the effects are actually here. So video effects, and you just pick something like clone, where you can have as many options, uh, different screens as you want. So I hope you've enjoyed this special of RetroCore and what goes into making a typical episode of the show. Uh, maybe in the future I'll do a few more specials, but the next RetroCore will be your typical standard affair. So until next time, keep on gaming and um, who knows, if you ever come to Japan maybe we can meet. Take it easy.